Hey, what's up you guys? It's Tyler from The Herontains, and we're back today with a brand new video. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly, step by step, how to set up your Tascam DR40 so you can get perfect audio at your next wedding. So we've been rocking the Tascam DR40 for all of our weddings for over five years. And it's definitely the number one recorder that I recommend to all wedding filmmakers, especially if you're just getting started. It's a really great recorder for a really great price. I do remember though, when I first got my recorder, I thought it'd be super easy to set up and I just showed up on the wedding day, kind of assuming that it'd be really easy to figure out. Boy, was I wrong. It was a black tie wedding in Washington, DC, full of tons of senators and really important people. And I'm standing over by the DJ booth, struggling, sweating bullets, trying to figure out how to get this stupid thing to record. I kept cutting off. I had no idea how to set it up. And that's stressful and I don't want that for you. So if you've bought this recorder, if you're thinking about buying it, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set it up, every single switch, every single button, every single menu item, so that you know when you show up to your first wedding with this recorder, you'll know exactly how to set it up. All right, so here we are, we're looking at the Tascam DR40, and I'm just gonna walk you through all the different things you need to check before you hit record on a wedding day. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna actually look at is going to be um, on the side here. We wanna make sure that we're selecting the right external in setting here. Okay, so there's three different settings. There's line level, mic level, and then mic plus phantom. So mic plus phantom, you gotta be really careful on a wedding day because you don't wanna have this on and then plug it into a DJ's board. Depending on how they have it set up, you can actually fry their board. So you wanna be really careful with that. You only wanna use mic plus phantom if you're using a microphone that requires phantom power. Mic level and line level. I, I don't know the exact de definition of the differences between these two, but I do know that a line level signal is significantly stronger than a mic level signal. So what you can do is you can actually ask the DJ or the person in charge of the audio for the band, hey, is this a mic level signal or is this a line level signal, right? And you wanna make sure you're matching these up. And it, you can't really get go wrong with it. The, the, you'll notice that if you put it on line level and you have a mic level signal coming Coming into your recorder that you're not going to be able to get a very strong signal and vice versa. If you have it set to mic level and you're actually getting a line level from the board, it's going to be really, really loud. Even if you have your, your input level all the way down at one, which is the lowest that it can go without being off, that it'll still be way too loud. So if that's the case, if it, you either have a really weak signal or really strong signal, just switch to the opposite one. And most likely you wanna avoid phantom power unless you specifically know that you're gonna need it, okay? Um, the, you know, headphone jack you can use to monitor audio if you want. Um, you can't take this is only going out. So you can't plug in like an eighth inch. If they try and give you an eighth inch out of their board, you cannot plug it into here and nothing will happen, okay? Um, so yeah, so you wanna make sure you have this set appropriately based on the, um, the line level that you're getting. Okay, so once you have that set, we're actually gonna go in here, we're gonna hit the menu button right here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into a record settings. And this is where you set up sort of like the back end of the, the recorder. And once you have this set once, you don't really have to touch it ever again. Um, you just wanna know that it's here. Okay, so for the format, you always wanna choose WAV 24-bit. WAV is gonna be an uncompressed audio file. 24-bit is gonna be just the most data that you can get. So always go with that. Audio files are very small compared to video files. So so always just choose wave 24 bit. It's gonna give you the best audio quality possible. Uh, for sample, this is gonna sort of vary depending on the situation. For most cameras and DSLR cameras and things like that that we're gonna be using for you wedding filmmakers out there, you're most likely gonna be at 48K. It just helps to match the um, the audio from the recorder and the audio from the cameras. If you set it on something else, it's probably not gonna be the end of the world. 44.1 is another popular one. Um, but most of the time, just if you don't know any better, I would just stick with 48, okay? And then the rest of this stuff, I just leave it off. So track income, I don't even know what that is. Off, low cut off, pre-record off. This auto record when I first got this recorder really threw me for a loop. I don't know why, it was just, it made it really difficult for me to, it, I don't even know what it does, but I just turn it off, right? Turn it off. I don't want anything auto. We want to be in complete control over the entire thing. Auto tone, same thing with that. Keep it off, okay? And then the rest of these, honestly, place setting, browse, speakers, all that stuff, you don't need to really worry about any of it, okay? Speakers, I turn my speakers off just because I, I don't ever need to use them. But the rest of this stuff is more just, more just if you're playing back on the recorder, which I never ever do. Um, where we're going to go next is going to be others, okay? 
So in others, uh, we can even ignore a lot of this stuff. Information, tuner, effect, file name, you can change if you want to. This is just gonna be what the files look like when they show up in your computer. So you can um, go in here if you want and you can change it to be your name, your company name, whatever it is that you want. Um, and you can see down here a sample of what the file is going to look like in the computer. That's personal preference up to you. Uh, date, time, make sure you have that set for the metadata just so that it shows the correct date and time. So it's easier to sort things later if you need. I don't know what remote does. I never ever touch it. System is where we wanna go. For some reason, all the important stuff, they bury deep into this system menu under others. I don't know why they made it so far away from the main menu, but that's where we're gonna go next, okay? So start at the very top. Um, auto power save, again, I keep that off. We don't want anything auto. We wanna be in complete control over everything. Backlight, I have it on right now always just for the sake of this video. But if I were you, I would change it down to probably about five seconds, maybe 10 seconds. This will just help you save battery life. Um, and we'll leave it on always just for right now. Contrast, this is just affecting the screen. Battery type, you wanna just make sure you're putting in what type of battery you have if you have um, either these which are like rechargeables or the alkaline. You just wanna make sure you put in the appropriate one there. I don't know exactly why, but just do, just do what it says, okay? Uh, Phantom volts, you can change this here. If you have a microphone that requires less voltage than 48, most of them are 48. I've actually never even heard of a 24 volt microphone. I'm sure that they exist. Uh, you can change that here. And then here's the big thing that most people are gonna search around forever trying to find, and this is how to format your cards, okay? So for some reason, they give you three different options, initialize, quick format, and full format. I don't really know why. Um, I will say that initialize and full format take a really long time to format, like, 15 minutes, sometimes longer. Like I've had it before, we're trying to leave the house and I accidentally hit the button and I was like, shoot. So I'm like carrying this thing around in my pocket because I don't, it takes so long to do the full format. So what I normally do is a quick format. Um, if you have the time, like the night before the wedding or something like that, you can initialize your card. I don't, I don't really know what the advantage of that is. I'm sure there's something, but quick format works just fine. You have to hit the button twice in order to do it and it's gonna format your card, okay? So those are all sort of like the backend settings that we have to, to get all set up and look at. Once we have that good, our card is formatted um, and all that good stuff. Now we're gonna go into this third button right here, which is going to be our record modes. So now there's really only a couple record modes that you're gonna have to worry about, especially for weddings. So I'm just gonna go over those. So the first one, the one that you're gonna use 99% of the time, this I think is one of the best features of this entire recorder, honestly, is gonna be the dual record mode, okay? So essentially what this is gonna do is it's gonna record one track, which is gonna be your normal levels. Whatever levels that you set in the recorder that's going to record that track and simultaneously it's also going to record a second track right here whoops with this dual level whatever you decide so the second track will have a bit of a pad on it so it'll be less loud compared to your main track so in this case you can set it to negative 12 negative 10 whatever you want this to be and that safety track is going to be negative you know 12 decibels less than the main track okay so this is really really important so you set that to whatever you want it to be when you're in dual record your source is really important okay now this is going to be where the re recorder is looking to pull the audio source from so if you're not careful and you accidentally leave it on an internal mic like this it's going to be recording from these microphones here and it's not going to be recording from the bottom where you have it plugged in and that's going to cause some problems so if you're getting a line from a dj and you're just plugged into one of the ports, right? They give you an XLR or they give you a single quarter inch out of their board, you are going to select external in one. Okay, so you have your you want it to come from an external source that's in one. So you want to always make sure that it's plugged into this left channel, not the right channel for this. Okay. If you have um, two if the DJ is giving you a like two different lines out, they're giving you a left and a right. Um, for me, that comes so usually if, if I use come out of the RCA, my RCA goes into two quarter inch cables that can go left and right. In that case, you can do external in one slash two. Um, that's again kind of going to be depending on your situation. Most of the time, from when I'm shooting weddings anyway, I'm doing um, I'm doing external in one, just a single single source. Okay, so again, this is what you're going to use 99% of the time. You just want to make sure you have all these things set. Your dual record set that to whatever you want it to be and then you're good to go um four channel is if you're doing two different like 
mics simultaneously, which you almost never have to do for weddings, um, but you you can do that in here. Stereo, again, is going to be if you have that stereo signal coming from the DJ or from the band or whoever, um, you can do the stereo. And again, for that, you're going to make sure you're going up to external. For all these, you always wanna, you're always going to want to make sure before you hit record that you have these set because it, sometimes it'll reset. I don't know if it's like if you, t if you change the batteries or what. You always want to make sure you're coming in here and you're checking your source and that you're source is not the internal mic unless that's what you're going for. The other one would be mono. Again, if you're just getting that single track and for some reason you don't want to do the dual recording, um, you would want to come in here for mono if you just have the one chord coming out, external in one, and you're going to be good to go. Okay, so once we, so we're going to put this back the way that we want it. So we're going to do dual. We're going to change it to external in one, negative 12 dB. Okay, so then we're going to be good to go. We're going to come back here and we're going to, I'm gonna get a mic, I'm gonna plug it in here and we're gonna see what we are looking at when we are setting everything up and make sure that our levels are good. Okay, so before I plug the mic in, um, you have your record button right here. So if you hit it the first time, it's gonna start flashing, uh, which you might think means you're recording. It does not. This is your standby button. When you do this, you'll be able to start seeing your audio levels and you'll be able to start to see it bouncing here. Um, when you hit it again and it's solid red like that, that means that you're recording. I just wanted to let you know that before I plug the mic in because I'm gonna have to hit record when I plug it in. So here we go. I'm going to plug the mic in now. Okay. So what I just did is I took the mic that was plugged into the camera and I plugged it into the recorder here. So I have an XLR plugged into the bottom here, similar like you'd have at a wedding day. Um, I have the headphones here. Now we're monitoring um, and I hit record. So now you can see that um, now you can see our levels. So the top one here that says external, right? That is our main level. That is our main normal track. Below it, you can see it says negative 12 because we have it set to negative 12 for our safety track. So if I get really, really loud and I start to peak, which, ah, okay, there you go. So you can see there, there's a little light right here that came on when I peaked and that is your peak indicator. So you can actually see that from across the room, which is nice on a wedding day. If that's going crazy, you need to run and uh, fix your levels, but not necessarily if you have a negative 12 dB pad on there. So um, this is what you're looking for. So again, on the side here, we have it set to, I have it set to mic plus 48, just because this is a phantom required microphone that I'm using. Um, and then our input levels right here, this is how you change the levels up and down of the gain for the mic. So um, let's see, we'll put it back in here. We're gonna get you guys back in and focus. There it is, okay. So you can see here that if I turn it down, that the, you know, it, it goes just simple numbers, external in, and we're gonna turn it back up so you can hear me more clearly here. Okay, so around 25 is actually perfect. You can see that it shows you this little arrow. Um, that is right around negative 12. That's where you want your um, your peaks to be hitting, maybe even a little louder than that. So I can turn it up to 30. Um, and then over here on the side, you can see where your peaks are falling. It actually gives you the actual readout. So as I'm talking louder, maybe a little bit louder, you can see that it's going up to you know negative eight. And then as I'm talking kind of at a normal volume, it's right around negative 11 negative 12. So this right here would be a pretty good signal. I would consider this to be pretty safe as far as, you know, a, a recording goes. But as far as like the other information that's on the screen here, up here you can see, you know, in wave 24, 48K, like we set, we are in mono because we have it set to just the you know the single track in. We have our uh, external, our main track up here, our negative 12 dB track here. Here you can see which, um, you know, this is the file number that we're on. We're on file number 0112. Um, and then all this stuff over here, low cut off, all this other stuff, right, that we don't necessarily need to look at. And then here you can see obviously your recording time. So it's pretty simple. Honestly, it's not super, super complicated. Um, you just need to really, really be diligent and double check that you have the um, your source correct. And that's the biggest holdup. That's the thing that'll throw you for the most loop. And if you don't know about that, we'll make it really, really, uh, especially in the moment as you're recording or you're trying to plug it in really fast and the DJ is looking over your shoulder and you want to see like you're talking about, that's the most important thing. So get it set up, make yourself make sure you've got some nice safe levels here. Again, feel safe that you have this negative 12 dB pad right here, and then you're good to go.
All right, guys, there you go. Hopefully now you have a really solid understanding of how to set up your Tascam GR40 and you feel really confident going to your next wedding. If you're interested in purchasing the Tascam GR40 or any of the other audio gear that we use, I'm gonna leave a link below to our kit page. If you go there and click on any of those links, we do get a small kickback from Amazon, which really helps us and doesn't cost you guys anything extra. So that's a really awesome way to support us and it would be really appreciated if you found this video helpful. If you did find it helpful, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. That's also really appreciative. And if you wanna see more videos videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. And if for some reason I missed something or you have more questions about how to use this recorder, please, please leave those down in the comments below. I'd love to answer your question. This has been Tyler from the Harringtons, and I'll see you guys in the next one.